All You Need to Know, the Bloomberg Quint podcast that prepares you for the day's business. Good morning and thanks for listening in. This is the All You Need to Know podcast on Bloomberg Quint and I'm Alex Matthew. Today is the 21st of July. Another day, another record increase in coronavirus cases. India added 40,000 new cases in the 24 hours to 8 a.m. yesterday and there's likely going to have been a similar increase in cases in the last 24 hours as well. Total cases reached 11.2 lakh yesterday. The good news is that over 7 lakh of those people have recovered. Active cases are likely to rise past the 4 lakh mark today. Meanwhile, there's good news in the race to find a vaccine. A vaccine the University of Oxford is developing with AstraZeneca showed signs of promise in early human testing and is now set to move into larger trials that will determine how effective it really is. The vaccine increased levels of both protective neutralizing antibodies and immune T cells that target the virus, according to the study organizers. Other programs, remember, by Pfizer and BioNTech, as well as Moderna, have already made rapid strides towards finding a vaccine. Equity markets globally may not be following the script so far, but gold certainly is. Demand for the safe haven has been tremendous and Citigroup says it's only a matter of time before prices hit record high, soaring past the previous peak that was set in 2011. In a major update in the banking space here in India, Reuters has reported, quoting unnamed sources, that the government is looking to privatize more than half of the banks it owns to reduce the number of government-owned lenders to just five as part of an overhaul of the banking industry. According to the report, the first part of the plan will be to sell majority stakes in Bank of India, Central Bank of India, Indian Overseas Bank, Yuko Bank, Bank of Maharashtra and Punjab and Sindh Bank. In the aviation space, the market leader Indigo has said that it will cut 10% of its workforce in a reaction to the dramatic reduction in air traffic. The carrier said in a statement yesterday that the disease has made it impossible for the company to fly through this economic storm without making some sacrifices. The Supreme Court has reserved its judgment on petitions by telecom operators seeking more time for paying thousands of crores worth of statutory dues stemming from the top court's October verdict that upheld the government's calculations. Lawyers representing the telecom carriers and the Solicitor General of India, Tushar Mehta, sought more time during the hearing. The Supreme Court also pulled up the Department of Telecommunications for trying to recalculate the pending payments. You'll find all the details in the story on the website BloombergQuint.com. In international markets, US stocks climbed further, with tech stocks climbing even higher. The Dow Jones ended flat, but the S&P 500 climbed 0.8% and the tech-heavy Nasdaq ended higher by 2.5%. And that positivity seems to have carried forward into the Asia-Pacific region as well, with all three early rises starting strongly in the green. And with that, it's over to Agam Vakil for the trade setup for the day in India. Good morning, Agam. How are we looking today? Good morning, Alex, and good morning, listeners. Well, the SGX Nifty futures are currently up 65 odd points, and that means that we are likely to see a positive opening. In terms of stocks and news, right at the top, we have ACC's earnings for the second quarter of 2020. The revenue declined 37%. Its net profit was down 41%. Margins, however, did hold up and expanded to 20.2% versus 18.8% on the back of lower freight, power and employee costs. We have an update from Interglobe Aviation and perhaps a serious one. Now it says Indigo, impacted by the pandemic, is flying only a small percentage of its fleet of 250 planes and will cut 10% of its workforce, according to CEO Rona Jay Datta. 
costs. Impacted employees will be given a severance pay and medical insurance has been extended till December for impacted employees, according to the company statement. Moving on, an interesting deal when it comes to mid-sized company Majesco. Majesco will sell its U.S. business to a private equity company for $13 a share, representing a valuation of $594 million. Majesco holds 74% in its U.S. subsidiary and will get $421 million cash for its stake in that subsidiary. NDPC said that it has added 800 megawatts of Lara Super Thermal Power Project to the company's installed capacity and with this total installed capacity of NDPC comes to 62,910 megawatts. Tata Power's arm, Coastal Gujarat Power, has allotted NCDs worth 350 crores on a private placement basis and finally we have gateway industry parks where the board has approved a rights issue of 1.6 crore shares at 72 rupees per share aggregating to 116 crore rupees the rights entitlement stands at four rights equity shares for every 27 held the record date has been set was 24th July. Now these are just some of the stocks we can watch out for as we move into trade today but don't forget to go through our morning edition of All You Need to Know only on BloombergQuint.com. Thanks Agam and as always thank you all for listening in. This is Alex Matthew signing off. Have a great day. I hope you enjoyed listening to All You Need to Know. Did you know that you can listen to this show on the IVM Podcast app? On the IVM Podcast app, along with this, we have a number of other shows which you think you'll enjoy. Listen to Cyrus Says with Cyrus Brocha as the host. Listen to Pesa Vesa with Anupam Gupta. The Scene and the Unseen with Amit Varma or Shunya One hosted by Shiladiti Mukhopadhyay and myself. Check out the IVM Podcast app to get more talk content that you will enjoy.